idiots. Just a bunch of mindless pussy ass fucks. These Democrats be like, ah, fuck you! Idiots. Fuck you! That's what all the Dems be like. <laughs> ah, shit. It's just not easy. It's too many Welcome to another episode of Scully Goes Wide, mother... Yeah, everything's just falling apart today. Alright, I'm gonna discuss with you all the five worst game shows to ever be revived or given a second or even a third life. For this particular list, I mean, it's pretty simple. I'm doing it in a Scully Goes Wide kind of manner. And, and, you know, these particular game show revivals not only deviate from the norm of the original run so much that they're practically abominations of the originals, but they're nothing like the originals, and at the same time, they're completely screwed up. All right, let's get started. Number five, Tic-Tac-Toe 1990. I'm not really going to give two shits on what to say about that other than you got a bunch of people writing the show who can't even book their way through a show, much less into a show. And and you got the same people who, who can't even, these guys, you know, they, they can't even write on a freaking piece of paper the phrase, you know, I can't even can't do that. I mean, what the hell? It, it's kind of, it, it kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? And you know, the original Tic-Tac-Toe, which by the way, was hosted by Bill Cohen, if I recall correctly, that show not only had a time-tested formula but it was also a time-tested formula that was not meant to be with. And the 1990 version of Tic-Tac-Toe, what do they do? They with it. Because of course they do, and that's why the show lasted as long as it did, or in this case, as short as it did. I don't even know who thought that such an abomination of a revival or a reboot would ever come to light. I mean, I, I don't, I really don't get it. I don't get it, period. I'll never understand it to save my life. I'll never truly allow myself to understand it to save my neck from the news because I'm just not meant to. Because you're not meant to understand shit like that. You understand? It's pretty simple. You're not meant to understand shit like that. Because, like, that deserves to be in the garbage can. Because it's shit. You understand? It's shit. I mean, I'm not going to go into it any further. Perhaps maybe it's best that I don't go into it any further. Number four on the list. There's actually a tie for fourth place. So, if... You're expecting five game shows that got revived that shouldn't have gotten revived in the first place in the way that they did? Probably expect maybe a couple more of those. Right, number four. It's a tie for number four. The match game Hollywood Squares Hour and, of course, the 2008 version of American Gladiators. I'm going to start with the more obvious one, American Gladiators 2008. The concept is pretty straightforward. You've got, and, and by the way, I watched the rebooted American Gladiators from 2007 to 2009, or basically when it, when it aired in 2008 and 2009 and 10, you know? And the fact that they had an ex-WWE professional wrestler named Hulk Hogan who inadvertently and purposefully was put on the rebooted American Gladiator show to 
basically sabotage it from deep within. Perhaps that was probably most telling of all. And, and maybe I shouldn't point this out, and maybe I should. And I'll tell you why. When he goes to interview a contestant, every three seconds he says, brother, or, well, let me tell you something, brother, or some shit like that. And I probably shouldn't say shit, but you understand, because she hits the fan, and when she hits the fan, you gotta get real. You understand? Because it isn't going to wait for you to get real. you got to get real with it. And of course, Hollywood Squares was sabotaged by Mark Goodson. Despite the fact that it was not Mark Goodson's creation. Which is why I include Match Games Hollywood Squares Hour as the co-holder of the number four spot on this particular list. And, and you know what's funny? What's so funny about this is that Mark Goodson created the match game and went about that part of the reboot of the two popular shows flawlessly. But since Hollywood Squares was not his creation, but rather that of, you know, Merritt or Merrill Herod or whatever the hell his name is, you know, this, this guy named Merrill, right, created a Hollywood Squares item. As a matter of fact, hell, let me, let me look it up now. Let me look it up now. Right. So, Merrill Heater, right, that's his name. Aren't you glad I'm able to remember stuff through a computer? Aren't you guys glad about that? Now, since Hollywood Squares was Merrill Heater's creation... Mark Goodson thought it'd be a good idea to reboot the two shows into an hour-long programming show to bastardize Hollywood Squares and angelize the match game as it was once revived in 1973 with the original host of the 62 to 69 version hosting it for nine years. Now, you know why that was successful. We all know why that was successful. And for obvious reasons that I'm not going to go into, the Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour was a big fail, not because of the way that the Match Game portion of it was carried out, but because of how poorly executed the Hollywood Squares portion of it was carried out by Mark Goodson, who sabotaged Merrill Hader's own creation, and instead of having John Davidson host it or Peter Marshall host it, he had some know-nothing schmuck named John Bauer, or whatever his hell, whatever his name was. He was once the host of the Pop and Rocker game, but he was hired to host the Hollywood Squares portion of the match game Hollywood Squares Hour just to sabotage the product and it was not John's it was not John Bauman's fault aren't you glad I correct myself as fast as I do but John Bauman who was the host of the pop and rocker game was hired aboard the sinking ship of the Titanic that was the match game Hollywood Squares hour to intentionally and deliberately sabotage the Hollywood Squares portion of the match game Hollywood Squares hour through no fault of his own, but rather through all the fault of one Mark Goodson. Just because of the fact that it was Merrill Hayter's creation, not that of Mark Goodson. Number three, and keep in mind, this one wasn't poorly as executed as with other particular knockoffs of reboots dare I say it you know number three on this list are you smarter than a fifth grader now why did it get revived because the original sucked in comparison it lasted from what was it 2007 to 2010 and it insulted the intelligence of every adult just about that 
agreed to be a contestant on the show, and it featured questions that obviously the contestants were all scripted to either answer fraudulently or just deliberately get wrong. That's why the show initially got canned. What Fox won't tell you, the guys in charge of the show, is that Mark Burnett, the guy who created the disaster in the first damn place, rebooted the show for a 2015 revival with an updated version of the David Vanacor theme song of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Are you dumber than a masturbator? Don't you wish you could be back in school? Cause you're not smarter than you used to be. <laughs> I don't know, it's not, that's not how the fucking song goes, obviously. Cause it doesn't use the word masturbator in there. But it might as well have. Because the show and its reboot in entirety sucked. And, and I'm going to tell you why. Because from the very first moment following the announcement that the show was going to get rebooted, everybody justifiably and rightfully shat all over it. They shat all over it because it sucked. They shat all over it because they knew it was going to suck. And they shat all over it because they didn't expect it to even come close to succeeding. And they knew that Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader was going to suck too in its initial run, but they expected something good out of it. And when something good didn't come out of it, and nothing came of it, they still blindly watched the show, still waiting for it to get better, and then... In 2010, they finally realized, okay, this show's not going to get better. I'm going to quit watching it because the show fucking sucks. Meanwhile, Mark Burnett had the brilliant idea of rebooting the show for a 2015 run and revival, which did nobody any favors whatsoever because this show sucked. I don't think I even need to get in that one, right? Now, I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, and quite frankly, I don't care. But the fact remains. The fact remains. There are actually, surprisingly, there are three equally as bad reboots of the originals that all simultaneously deserve the number two spot on my list because they are exactly that. They're number two. They're shit. I'm talking about the 23, the 2003 version of Let's Make a Deal hosted by Access Hollywood's, oh my god, Billy fucking Bush hosted the reboot. <laughs> Of Let's Make a Deal. 40 years after it first premiered on the network in which the initial reboot ran on NBC. It was expected for a brief five episode cameo run of sorts, but it only lasted three episodes because of the fact that Billy Bush hosted it. And the guys behind the reboot, including, oh my god, Monty Hall. What about that guy, right? He was the original host of the show in its initial run. But he was only hired to be the executive producer of the 40th anniversary reboot of it in 2003 when Billy Bush was hosting it simply because he was going to be paid millions and millions of dollars to do it. Of course, the guy at the time was in his 80s, so he wasn't all there. I wouldn't be all there if I was in my 80s, too. 
Not that I'm going to be in my 80s anytime soon. Of course, that'll only be about 75 years from now. No, wait, I'd be 100. Never mind. More like 55 years from now. But that's beside the point. The 2003 revamp of Let's Make a Deal was goddamn terrible from the beginning to the end. Which is why it only lasted three of the initial five episodes it was intended to last for before getting axed permanently until 2009 when it was revived on CBS and hosted by the very popular co-hosts Wayne Brady, Jonathan Mangum, and the model Tiffany Klumer, or whatever is, whatever her name is. Her name is Tiffany. She's the model for the show. And those three... In this latest reboot of the of the popular game show once hosted by Monty Hall has lasted since 2009 and is going to premiere season 10 of it this coming week according to my local TV stations another worthy and equally terrible note that deserves to be mentioned in equal regard as being a number two on my list would be the terrible, ridiculous reboot of Temptation, also known as the new, new Sale of the Century. The only reason why it was called Temptation is because, oh, by the way, they gave away the fact that it was the new Sale of the Century, despite the fact that that it had a long-running TV game show in Australia of the same name from 1983 to 2001, I would say. And then, of course, it's based almost not in any way on the Jim Perry version of the show, which was hosted by Jim Perry himself from 1983 to 1989. For about six and a quarter years. And that got axed. And it was revived in, I don't know, 2003-ish? 2001-ish? 2002-ish? And it was... They produced 130 episodes over a span of three weeks. Which is completely inexcusable. If, if you're going to make 130 episodes, let it be in about... Nine weeks, not three. Have some space between shows. Oh, oh, and they had this this worthless nobody host the show. Nobody knows his name because nobody cares to know his name because he's a bloke. Another particular bad show in particular that also deserves to be number two on this list, which also holds the same number two spot as Temptation, the new sale of the century, and the infamous 2003 revamp of Let's Make a Deal, which, by the way, had some very provocative staged material on there, which included women trying to fondle a black athlete which didn't go anywhere with anybody. In fact, it only furthered the cancellation inevitabilities and completely fucked that show to high hell. But the third and last co-owner of the number two spot on this list is, of course, the 2001 version of Card Sharks, which was hosted by Pat Bullard and in no way was related to to the 1978 to 81 or 86 to 89 versions hosted by the legendary Jim Perry, rest in peace, and Bob Eubanks, respectively. Or respectively. Aren't you glad I'm able to correct myself so easily? But let me let me explain something to you, okay? This reboot was so bad that by the second month of its syndication, it had been forced to air reruns of the prior episodes that aired prior to the reruns having to be issued. 
because the show sucked. You got a guy named Pat Bullard who hosted the 2001 reboot, which was created by GSN in an attempt to garner old fans of the show to the product. This was, this was basically at a time when GSN was immature and in its awkward phase. As a matter of fact, it was in its awkward phase until about 2014 when it finally decided to just, you know, get its head out of its keister long enough to cancel the widely shat on American Bible Challenge. Why the hell was that even a show, by the way? But Card Sharks 2001 was the absolute drizzling, pissing shits. And for good reason. Too many changes to the original formula, a terrible endgame, and Pat Bullard did none of the work except ask the questions. And by the way, by the way, there were too many changes in the particular revamp as opposed to the original formula for which the show was famous for. Even the YouTube web show that's obviously scripted, hosted by Game Show Entertainment, and some guy on YouTube who works for that particular YouTube channel, hosted the show at, at basically a next-to-nothing budget. You know, and it's really, really sad when a tribute version of the popular show beats the 2001 version of it, which promised that a contestant who went to the money cards could win over $50,000 on the all-new card sharks. I mean, fuck. If you put all new in there, it instantly kills the nostalgia and completely shits on whatever was left of it in the first place. Number one, and I know it's not really going to come as a shock to you. It probably... My God, I don't, I don't know if I should mention number one to you. As a matter of fact... I don't know if I want to mention number one to you. Um, I'm I'm just gonna come right out and I'm gonna say it, and I'm I'm going to completely tell you like it is, and and I'm not just all right. Well, I'll tell you like it is. The weakest link from 2002 to 2003, GSN. Of course, GSN, right? Because, because of course, right? Because reasons. We know what they are. The weakest links run on GSN from 2002 to 2003 was, I mean, it wasn't as good as it should have been. And there were high hopes for this, especially since George Gray was announced as the host who had previously hosted Extreme Gong from, I think, 1998 to 2000. So he had a bit of experience. But this guy had more of a class clownish type of demeanor about him. When, in reality, you're supposed to be the successor to the throne of the Queen of Mean herself, Anne Robinson who hosted the British version of the show from 2001 to 2016 or 2015. It lasted a hell of a lot longer than the American version on NBC from 2001 to 2002, and a hell of a lot longer than the GSN version from 2002 to 2003. For reasons I'm not going to discuss, the dollar amounts for the GSN reboot we're, we're like pennies in comparison to the mass amounts of money you could win on the Ann Robinson Americanized version of the host of, of the show, which was hosted on NBC from 2001 to 2002. Now, while I'm not going to explain why this is the worst 
reboot of a show in the first place. I will give it credit, however, for having stuck to the initial formula. The problem, however, was that it was condensed to half the time of the particular original British version and the much shorter lasting NBC American version, both of which were absolutely stellar in their own rights. But this one had no excuse, you know. If, if you're talking about high stakes, if you want high stakes, at least be like the NBC or the British version, not the GSN version. And I know you're going to disagree with me having dubbed it number one on the worst game show reboots of all time. But there is one in particular that is much worse than that. And that in particular would be one of the international versions of the original Press Your Luck game show. And it had absolutely no excitement to it whatsoever. Because the winner of that particular show in each episode would be walking away with the equivalent of about $1,000 in American money, which is not shit compared to the actual American version of the show, which initially ran as Second Chance for a few weeks in 1978 and as Pressure Luck from 1986 to 89, or... 83 to 86, I should say. Why am I confusing card sharks with Pressure Luck? Fuck me. But the Pressure Luck version from 83 to 86 in America on CBS, that was excitement. But the inter one of the international versions of it, I'm not going to tell you which one. I'm pretty sure it was either, well, actually, I'm going to tell you which one. It was the English version. The English version. I mean, it was just, it was just meh. There was no excitement to it whatsoever, whereas the, even the GSN version of Pressure Luck, also known as Whammy, which ran from 2001 to 2002, even that, as, as wishy-washy as it was, at least that had some excitement to it. Along with the CBS version of Pressure Luck, which ran from 86, nah, from 83 to 86. You understand? Aren't you glad I'm able to correct myself? But anyway, that's the list. And this episode has been brought to you by absolutely no one except for me. And the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which is paid in part by absolutely nobody because nobody cares about it anymore. Jesus Christ.